The word of God is quick and powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. And uh, it's the word that changes our lives and not necessarily uh, if I read it from an iPad or, or a Bible. All right? Don't want you to get caught up in that uh, too much. This is the scripture. You should be able to follow me in the scripture. Uh, for the next 30 minutes, I want to talk to you a message along the lines of pastor appreciation called uh, position through perception. Positioned through perception. Uh, the way that God works is what you see is what you get. If you can see it, you can have it. Okay, I'm getting some more witnesses now. All right, it took a minute. You know, amen, praise the Lord. Uh, what did he take Abraham out to do? He took Abraham and he stood him on the beach and he told him, look at the stars. Huh? When he was talking about his descendants, he said, look at the stars. See if you can number them. Look at the sand on the beach. That's how your seed will be in the earth. Need you to get a vision, though. Need you to see it. Okay? Positioned through perception. Did you know that you can be right on top of a miracle and miss it? You can be standing right in the room with Jesus needing healing and not get it, even though it's his will to give it to you. Dad Hagen said, when I was in Bible college, he said uh, in one of our uh, Holy Spirit classes, he said, that by the spirit, he could tell when he was standing over a person in a healing line if they was going to receive or not. He could tell right off of the bat if they were rejecting the power of God, whether knowingly or unknowingly. Well, my job today is make sure that you're not rejecting it knowingly. Your perception has everything to do with your reception. What you receive has everything to do with how you perceive. Now, now, why am I taking my time in dealing with this? Because this is especially threatening in a ministry like this one. Let me explain. Dr. Godot is one of very few of his size and caliber to stay behind every service that he can and touch and meet and pray for every single person. Now notice how I said Dr. Godot. Because after service today, I'm out. Deuces. I'll see you tonight. I'll see you. Look, don't leave. I was playing. I'll stay. I'll stay. Change the plans, I'll stay, don't walk out of them. <laughs> Dr. Godot got a special anointing on his life that allows him to stay and touch. Now, now, I was sitting over here, I wanted to stand up during praise and worship, I really did. But I was feeling that 7.30 and that 9.30. Oh man, I ain't eat nothing. And I, you know, I, was like, I need you to live right, right from here. <laughs> Matter of fact, I need some vitamins right now, Lord. Just download them by your spirit. Yeah. Pastor got a special anointing on him, and while it is beneficial what is on him, we also got to be very careful not to fall into familiarity. Not to get too comfortable and too loose around him. We're going to deal with some stuff. We're going to deal with some stuff. Uh, my subtitle, my subtitle is proper relationship with your pastor. Proper relationship with your pastor. We've been dealing with relationships coming up into this month, and we're in Pastor Appreciation Month, so we're going to deal with proper relationship with your pastor. Your pastor, number one, contrary to popular belief, is not your homie. 
Boy, we'll stop raising a lot of these monsters if some of these parents could get this revelation. That child is not your friend. We can clap on that. You can clap on that. Yeah. Nah. You want to be homies with the child. They need direction right now. They need correction right now. You're raising a monster. Praise the Lord. I struck some nerves on some mommies right now. They all on Instagram with their daughter. Yeah, this is the homie right here. Negative. You better correct that girl when she needs it. Praise the Lord. People come to church for a lot of reasons. I grew up here 34 years. I've seen a lot in 34 years. And uh, some people come to church because they're lonely. They, they, yeah, 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 really, they do. Huh? They got tired of looking for homies at the bar. Wasn't none of them working out. They figured they tried the church. Might be some better homies right there. Amen? Huh? Okay. He didn't like that reason. Uh, some people come just because you nosy. You want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, you, just like the barbershop, you can pick up some good information at the time. Okay, you didn't like that reason. Let's move along. Let's move along. Some people come here to find some gullible Christians to, to pawn your business off on. You know, the Lord gave me a business. God's standing right behind him like, <laughs> no, I didn't. But God put it on my spirit to talk to you about a business opportunity. Okay. Got some mean looks on that one. Well, let's go to my favorite one then. My favorite all-time reason why people come to church for the wrong reason, but my favorite one still is the, the fashion show. Why do you need drugs when you have people to look at? Pure entertainment right there, pure entertainment. You know the ones, let me describe them for you real quick. They waited until praise and worship was over and the lights came up and everybody sat down. And then they say, oh, I have to tinkle. Huh? Wait till everybody's quiet and calm and then, oh, I, I'm parched. I, I, need a, I need something to drink. Oh, excuse me, brother. Excuse me, brother. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. My bad. My bad. My bad. You see that? You see that, though? You see my creep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, them shoes is all right, but look at mine. Look at mine. All right, here we go. I'm out the aisle. I'm out the aisle. Now, Dr. Good will be back in three weeks, you know what I mean? But, you know, you got me for now. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. You don't know what 100 means? Keep it 100 with you. Keep it 100 with you. And, um, you know, Pastor, keep it 100 with you, too. He's just mixed with a lot more wisdom, you know what I mean? Pray for me, you know what I'm saying? Pray for me. I love you back. Whichever one of them reasons that may fit you category-wise, I'm here and on assignment to tell you that if your reason is anything these five or any that I missed that you're thinking you're getting away with. If your reason is anything else but getting a word from God for your life, from your designated mouthpiece, then you got it twisted. Who need a translation for twisted? This is my bilingual congregation right here. We multi, yeah, we multicultural around here. You got it twisted. Now the Bible talks about those who do public displays of righteousness. Hmm? You know the ones that pray. 
They wait for everybody else to get quiet. Shalom! Kaya! Ring around the road. Time a bow tie. Time a bow tie. She come in a handy. She come in a handy. She comes in a Honda. Yes, that's what I said. That's what I said. And how the congregation is laughing right now, that's how we be laughing at you under our breath when you do that, too. We... <laughs> did she just say come in a Honda for real? Yes, she did. The Bible says, listen, when you do stuff like that, you have your reward. Everything that you wanted to get out of the situation, Follow me. Everything you wanted to get out of the situation, your whole reason for coming to church, you got it. Now, I want to discuss what you missed out on while you was getting what you was getting. Because while you got too comfortable with the pastor, or oh, that's just feel, whatever, whatever, Whatever you call him. That's what you're doing when you're sitting here Facebooking while he's up talking. Say what? You might not say it with your mouth. That's just feel. But the man of God is up here delivering a message that he spent all Saturday and summer Friday night travailing for, get, pulling out the spirit for you. You got the nerve to check your Instagram while he up here. Hold on, I don't need no class right now. I got 17 minutes. We're going to deal with the real. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You're taking my time up with the clap, for real. Listen, listen. That's what you're saying. Yeah, he up there talking. Yeah, he might have a word for me, but this is more important. If you come here looking for a business opportunity, you might miss a word from God that was a seed going to be spoken into your life to plant five businesses. Come on and see. But how do you perceive who you in the midst of? Now the Bible says Jesus just left he, he, the Bible says he went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, huh, and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. How God anointed Jesus, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. Well, let me ask you this question. Did God leave Jesus when he went to his hometown? Yet still the scripture records, and he did not many mighty works there because they was his in-laws. It says because of their unbelief. Can't, this can't be a Messiah because we know him. He can't have a life-changing word because I see him all the time. That's his sister right there. So can't nothing significant or life-changing come out of his mouth because that's just... Come on, come on. See, we need this teaching all throughout the year because people are missing out. They're missing out on destiny. You're missing out on favor. You're missing out on blessing. And you're coming into an atmosphere each week. And the only difference between you. You know the difference? I heard uh, Johnny Morales say this this morning. I thank God that I'm around sharp dudes all the time. I'll be picking up stuff from, from Richard, uh, Pastor Braxton. I'll be picking up stuff from uh, Pastor uh, Dane back there in the back. Little different things, but Johnny said in the 930 service, he said, I am convinced that the difference between a person with religion 
and a person with a relationship is in a shout. So you can hold on, you can hold on to, you can hold on to some pride while you in religion. But the closer you get to Jesus, the more you realize that you ain't nothing without him. I need you to live. I need you to breathe. I can't do nothing without you. I can't do nothing without I am what I am by your grace. See, when you got a relationship, you ain't ashamed to shout, to give glory and to give honor to whom honor is due. Don't get too close. Touch your neighbor real quick. Say, hey, hey, hey. Don't get too close. <laughs> when you recognize, we're about to talk about a great woman here in the Bible who recognized. She had some things like many of you already accomplished in her life, but like many of you, she still knew that there was more to be done. And she pretty much knew that everything that she can do on her own is done. That's what we're going to talk about right now. And I'm going to show you through her life and her written testimony what you need to do to get the same results. Listen, there's some things that you want from God right now, and all it's waiting on is for you to perceive that his man is in your midst. Listen, I'm talking about some stuff you gave up on 10 plus years ago. Yeah, that stuff. Hmm? Bible says Sarah laughed in the tent. Huh? When she heard the message, she gonna give birth to a child? She, <laughs> she, she, she say a child? That's supposed to be an angel out there. He must, he must not know about age. He must not know Viagra ain't been invented yet. <laughs> what you mean I'm finna have a child? We ain't nothing been cracking in this tent in 10 years. You gotta get the... Okay, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> we serve a supernatural God. Listen who does supernatural things. And he does it through a connection. For all you lone rangers in here. You done been hurt, so now nobody can get close to you no more. Me, myself, oh, you know some of them. Nobody can get close to you no more. But well, let me tell you something. If nobody can get close to you no more, you can't move no further. Oh, wow. Tell us some more, Pastor. If you got to do everything that you're supposed to do on your own, from now on, you're going to move at a snail's pace. Hold on, hold on. Where's the scripture for that? Here it is. One can chase a thousand, two can chase Relationship. We need relationship. Now, when you're in relationship, make sure you're getting the benefits of the relationship by realizing who you're in relationship with. Hold on. And the rules that surround this type of relationship. Here's my point. Here's my point. The, the rules for my relationship with Naomi is different than my rules for my relationship with Mike. You better know this. And thank God. Thank God. Close to both of them, I'm accountable to one. Only one of them got the right to ask me where I'm at. <laughs> 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 
There are rules to this. If you don't like sleeping on the couch, there are rules. If you don't like eating your steaks with special seasoning from under the counter, we're going to put that special sauce on this for me. Talking about bring my steak. It's coming. It's coming. There are rules to relationships, and they change with the relationship. This is your pastor. He ain't your homie. Now, the Bible's go to, go to uh, 2 Kings 4 and 9, and listen, don't be nervous. I got nine minutes left. I'm stopping in nine minutes, and we'll just pick back up at the 7 p.m. service tonight. But I want to introduce you to this woman real quick in 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Turn quickly. I got 847. Quick. All right, it's on the screen. Stop turning. Look at the screen. Look. Ready? Here it is. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Let's deal with that really quickly. Number one, she said, uh, Behold, now. Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passes by us continually. Okay, so let's just break that down real quick. Uh, now would, uh, would signify that this is something that hit her. You know what I mean? When do you lean over to tell your homegirl about the woman's toenails that's trifling in the mall? When do you tell her? When the revelation comes. You might be standing in the line at Stegas Gate, like, oh, snap, look, 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 look. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hmm? You speak up about a revelation you just got now. The Bible saying he passed by there continually, but she's saying, oh, snap. I, excuse me, you know, oh, snap, meaning, Wow. Wow. You know, I noticed something different about him than everybody else. Listen, listen, listen. I know y'all know what I'm talking about because I know that y'all have ran since last Sunday into about two or three people talking bad about your pastor or this church. If you went to a nail salon, barber, uh, barber shop, Shoot, some of us aren't, just got to go to Walmart and you can hear something about your man of God. You have been in one way or another discouraged from staying connected to this man of God, but here you sit. Don't clap. Here's why. There's something about him. There is something. Listen here. You just had the revelation that that woman had. There is something about this man that makes him different than other men. I have seen some talk it, not walk it. I see some of them walking but don't know how to talk. I see some of them confused in walking and talking. But this man right here, there is a difference with him. Listen, listen, listen. Praise God that you passed that test. Because you got to have eyes to see what you have seen dealt with the same thing that Jesus dealt with when he was addressing Peter, when he said, who do men say that I am? Huh? And he said, some say Elijah, some say, whoop, 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 whoop. And then Jesus said, but who do you say I am? Huh? Huh? Now he told him, now, now he said, now look, Peter, you hooked up for life, dog. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Brother? You are hooked up for life because you couldn't have got that from flesh and blood. What you see, how you have just identified me, that was spirit. You are hooked up, man. You are hooked up. Listen, the spirit showed you who your connection was. That's why you keep coming back. Regardless what they say to you, he done clout some of you in service. Amen. I got a hand over there. 
That must have been a recent clowning. Okay, and two, three. Right here, those are more of the fresher clowns. Right there, pastor will get you. Oh, he'll rub you the wrong way sometimes. I ain't getting no witnesses on that, but I know you're in here. You know, Caleb, your pastor will just come straight at you. You come up, hey, pastor, we're excited. We want to get married. This is my fiance. Pastor say, you having sex? Shut up, Pastor. I just said that this was my. <laughs> How did we get here? Can I tell you her name first? <laughs> He's a real pastor. Yes, he, is. he will really challenge you. He'll really provoke you, really push you into good works. <laughs> He's the real deal, nonetheless. Now, be careful of every spirit that want to run you away from him. Because they in your life, too, disguised as homies. Disguised as homies. Let me tell you something. The devil is not stupid. He has an advanced course for all of you advanced Christians. He know he can't get all of us with the crack pipe. He can't take all of our destinies with the alcohol bottle. Oh, but we got some, we got some, you know, we got some uh, advanced classes for, for you advanced Christians. Huh? Be close to the man and stay in position class. Be close to the man enough to see his flaws. Stay in position. That he can still speak to you what God is telling him. And you still take it like God is saying it. And not just feel. I got some other stuff right here. I got a couple of minutes left. Jump down to verse 10. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. Now let me shut down some of your flesh right now. Are you telling me that I got to add on to my house and buy a new flat screen and a sleep number and get some, get some bath and body candles and all this type of stuff? Are you telling me that? No. No. What I am telling you is, is that this Bible is telling you that when you perceive the man of God for who he is, you make room in your life for him. Listen to me, listen to me. You might not want to clap after I tell you what kind of room I'm talking about. I'm talking about a room in your house room. Ain't no claps on that one. Ah, uh -uh, that's too late. <laughs> I'm talking about a room in your house room. Let me tell you something. You don't have to say welcome to somebody who you built a room for. They don't have to worry if they're going to get a key to the house. I got a room. I don't have to call to find out if my room is available because it's my room. Listen to me. I'm about to close. I'm about to close. Do you have a, an acknowledgement of who the man is? but still are unwilling to open up the private places of your life to him? Okay, 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 okay. There is some hurtful things that many of us have been through. And those walls were built with good intentions to protect your heart from ever feeling like that again. I can feel some, ooh, You built the wall with a good intention. But when you identify who your man of God is, he gets all access. He gets all access. You don't get mad at the doctor when you tell him that your shoulder hurt and he asks you 15 questions. After that, you don't get mad at question number four and say, I told you the shoulder hurts. 
There was a teenager sleeping. I woke him up abruptly just now. <laughs> welcome back, brother. Welcome back. <laughs> Doctor say, lift up your arm. Can you, can you swing it around? Huh? How's this resistance? Can you push against this? Can you push this way? Can you push that way? He asks you a bunch of questions, but it's for your benefit. You don't get an attitude with people that you come into for help. I'm going to help somebody this morning. This morning. Listen, we're going to pick it up back. We're going to pick it back up tonight. A little bit of review, and we'll get back into it. But let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you this before I close. God can do for you anything that you can believe can flow through your man of God. Did that come out right? He works through people. This is your man. If God wanted you to recognize somebody else, he would have made you see somebody else. But you saw him. Now, take proper steps in your relationship with him so you can get everything God intended for you to get out of the relationship when he introduced y'all. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done is not just a saying. You got to really flow with his kingdom. The kingdom got principles. The principles don't change. We'll talk about the rest of them tonight. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you, Lord, that your word uh, is a lamp to our feet. Your word is a light to our path. We receive the engrafted word of God, which is enabled to save our souls, and that's what needs to help right now. We need help in our minds, Father. Our minds challenge us in ways that we can't even explain sometimes. We get attacked in our minds through our Facebook friends and our Instagram friends and our coworkers. And Father, sometimes we get attacked in our minds through personal interactions with Dr. Goodo that we didn't understand, we didn't think was necessary. Father, help us never to lose sight that he is your designated man for our life in this time and season. May we never become too familiar. May we never become too comfortable that we can't receive correction, instruction, be told something that we don't want to hear. Father, I, I pray for every man and every woman who has been hurt beyond words. You said that you make a way of escape in every situation. You make a way of escape, which means after all that we have been through, there's a way out. Now, Holy Spirit, your, one of your job descriptions is to show us things to come and to reveal all things. We need to see the way out. We don't want all man of God that we have identified as the holy man of God for our life to be cut off from what you can do through him for us because of the walls that we have self-erected in our lives. Father, help us to trust again. Oh. Father, help us to believe in people again. Help us to open up our hearts 
to possible pain again that we would also experience the possibility of blessing beyond what we can ever imagine and peace that surpasses all understanding. I bless these men and women of God. I bless their going out. I bless their coming in. Everything they put their hands to prospers. Blessed are they in the city, in the field, when they come, when they go. They enjoy peace, which transcends all understanding. It guards and garrisons their hearts and minds. It is well with their marriages. It is well with their children. It is well with their finances. You said I would declare and decree a thing and it will come to pass. I say great is their peace and undisturbed composure. In Jesus name. I know that many people are dealing with different areas, but we always want to close out with an opportunity. You have an opportunity today for four areas. The first area is to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. I know many of us have been deceived over our lives in believing that there are many ways, many roads to the Father. But Jesus said very clearly in John the 14th chapter, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The Bible says if a man confess with his mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in his heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. If you are here or watching on this television and you say, Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. If he'll take me as I am, I will give him my heart. The good news is he'll take you just as you are. Whatever you are, the Bible says, if you confess your sin, whatever you've done, I am faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness means whatever the devil told you made you ineligible to receive Jesus Christ was in fact a lie. I want to lead you in this prayer with me right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you, God, raised Jesus from the dead so I can be saved. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I receive you now. Amen. Well, welcome to the body of Christ. Yes, that was all that it took. You are saved. Jesus is the Lord of your life. Now we encourage you to get hooked up with a good local church that will teach you the word of God and the foundational principles that you can build on and live the victorious life that Jesus came that we can have. God bless you.